CompC-based education has a focus on goals and objectives, while outcomes-based education uh, focuses on outcomes. Neither system is better than the other, and each serves a very specific purpose. And it's best to understand that you know research shows that just as long as you're not doing anything to harm your learner, any system or any form of education is going to contribute to the success. So please keep that in mind. It's best to understand the difference between competency-based education and outcomes-based education uh, from the perspective of, of a continuum, and then understanding the context that, of learning. So when we deal with with competency-based education, the key perspective is that everything is convergent. It's focused on getting to that very specific goal, okay? Skills, information um, are, are focused upon, and then there's an assessment of the skills and information focusing on converging on that particular goal. It's often teacher-controlled and content-centered. The emphasis is on a skill, ability, or content that the student deals with, and then that assessment. In contrast, outcomes-based education is divergent. You start with an authentic real-world goal in mind, a real project, and you have an authentic real-world assessment. Uh, the learner has the opportunity to choose that project, and there's a fair amount of learner control. And, and many people would argue that uh, outcomes-based education is learner-centered in the sense that the learner does have that control. Many aspects of the outcomes-based education environment are controlled by the learner. There often is a context set by the program, by the instructor, but the learner has control. In the middle is Bloom's Taxonomy, and I want you to notice that competency-based education often deals with the lower order thinking skills, remembering, understanding, applying, you know, foundational information school, skills that you often see in introductory courses, foundational courses. In higher uh, courses and in, in more advanced aspects of learning in graduate school or in a program like the PIPD, you move into the high order thinking skills where you've got analysis, evaluation, and creation. So the emphasis shifts to what the learner can create. Very, very different focus, and neither one is better than the other, but you need to understand where the role would shift, and depending on the learning environment that you're in, depending on the needs of your learner, depending on what you're planning to do, will determine whether or not you're going to go down the competency-based education route or the outcomes-based education route. Once again, the emphasis that you need to think about is what are you looking for the learner to do? Do you just want them to describe things, list things, vocabulary? Do you want to have them show that they understand something, they can interpret it, they can summarize it, they can discuss it? You, maybe you want them to you know, do a diagram or a chart or, or solve something, draw something, calculate. These are fundamental competencies that would fit under the competency-based education model. Whereas on the higher order thinking skills of creation, evaluation, and analysis, these fall under the category outcomes-based education. I want to use the example of a birdhouse and to explain how the uh, context of creating a birdhouse or the need for a birdhouse would be different in competency-based education versus outcomes-based education. With a competency-based setting, the goal would be to create a or build a birdhouse. Um, the instructor might uh, talk about where a birdhouse would be needed, identify the different types of birdhouses. There might be a short quiz on you know, the locations and the different types. Um, there would be probably a list of instructions, detailed instructions on how to build the birdhouse. And then the student could assemble the birdhouse and then based on a very specific criteria would be evaluated and judged on, on what they would have assembled. That's competency-based education. In contrast, the same need for the birdhouse from an outcome space perspective would look a little bit different. Rather than having a very specific um, information-based format on what the needs are, a learner may take a look at their environment and identify what birds are in a particular environment. And by identifying what birds are in, what species are in a particular environment, they might identify the needs of these uh, birds in terms of their nesting and housing and, and uh, reproduction and a variety of other things. And from that, they could determine perhaps what type of nesting materials would be necessary, or even if a, a certain type of a birdhouse would be appropriate and where you might want to implement those birdhouses. Um, with the outcomes-based education format, you might not even 
even build an actual birdhouse. Or if you did, it would be in the context of meeting the needs of a specific species within the context of um, conservation or other very uh, broad needs. So the outcome determines what the learner actually does versus building a treehouse to a very specific standard or a competency and a skill that a student would demonstrate. So if your need is competency based, then you will be developing a competency based DACUM where you've got the goals on the left hand side and then you've got a series of objectives that would lead to that particular goal. In contrast, if you are focusing on outcomes-based education and you have a need uh, very similar to what we're doing in, the, in this particular course, you would then de develop this course map or outcomes guide, another term for it, where you've got outcomes and then your activities and assessment uh, within the column perspective. Again, one system is not better than the other and your decision of choosing what system you will be using is going to be dependent upon the needs of your learner and the context of your learning environment.